What's up guys? Welcome to today's video. Welcome back to Fitness Friday. Hope y'all are having a wonderful, wonderful week. Let me know how your week is going in the comments below. Today is going to be another sit down and chat video because I feel like this is something I need to talk about before we continue on with Fitness Fridays. But let's, let's do our little intro and then we'll get into the video. I welcome you to a day in our life. This is the show where you get a little bit of everything. This is another episode of the Wonder Bill Show. The Wonder Bill Show. So I think a lot of you guys noticed a bit of a difference in my energy, my mannerisms, it just everything. Y'all y'all have noticed um I'm I'm acting more like myself again. If you've been a subscriber on the channel for a while, you know that one, I had a baby, obviously, but two, um, I had a pretty intense battle with postpartum depression after Eva was born. And when I uploaded the video last Friday, it didn't really dawn on me that I've, I haven't done an update on that until a few of you guys commented that you felt like I was back. And so it's a good way to put it because that's literally how I feel. I feel like I'm back. I feel like I'm back to myself. I'm kind of getting chills as I talk about this because it's, I just didn't think it was something I was going to struggle with. Um, I mean, I, I have anxiety. It makes sense. I have anxiety. I've had little bits, little bouts of depression here and there um, since I've struggled with anxiety, but it's never been to this degree. And so you hear about it, but you don't think that it can happen to you. And this is why I want to be open about it. I want to talk about it because whenever I did upload the video last year talking about postpartum depression, I had so many women reach out and tell me that they had struggled with it too. And just hearing that I wasn't alone was encouraging to me. A lot of women offered some really, really good advice, feedback. Um, they shared kind of what helped them work through it. And I'm just thankful for talking about it because, again, you hear about it, but you don't think it's going to happen to you. So I kind of, I just wanted to do an update and let you guys know how, how I'm feeling now. Talk more about my journey. So if this isn't a topic that interests you, I get it. I understand. But I think it's so important to talk about in terms of mental health and, and postpartum health. Because I think that it's kind of a taboo topic. I'll start out with um, an experience that I had. An interaction that I had with somebody online that angered me and it further fueled my want to talk about this topic. As y'all know, I've, I've been very open about this. Um, I shared on my Instagram my fitness journey as a new mom and also my fitness journey dealing with postpartum depression. And, you know, I would use hashtags postpartum, postpartum fitness, things like that. There was one day that I, I posted a picture. I don't even know what the picture was about. Um, I wasn't talking about depression, but I was struggling with it at the time. And somebody commented, this person has now been blocked. We don't need to talk about who it was. But somebody commented and said, I wish you would stop using those hashtags. It makes me think you're depressed. First of all, you don't know if I'm depressed or not. And who are you to talk about what hashtags I can and can't use on my posts? So anyway, this same person, before, before I wisened up and blocked them from viewing my account, posted on another, commented on another post of mine where I was talking about how my workouts were such struggles at the time. And I, I was dealing with depression. I had talked about it and, and he made just very, very inconsiderate comments about how I would have more fitness clients if I stopped being such a downer. I just, that's the gist of it. I just, I needed to stop being such a downer. And it frustrated me to no end because I, I'm pretty confident with who I am and I knew that I wanted to talk about postpartum depression since I realized I had it because I know the importance of being open about these issues and mental health issues and how much weight we can hold onto ourselves whenever we keep it inside. And so what scares me is if he were to make that comment to somebody that was more unsure of themselves. Um, so obviously I blocked him. A few of 
a few of my friends had had a few words to say before I saw the comment. That's another reason why I want to talk about this topic. You don't understand it until you're in it. And it just breaks my heart to think that there are people out there that feel like they're alone and struggling with this. So if I can help encourage, uplift, or just comfort one person with talking about this, it's worth it to me. I know a lot of people don't understand why I talk about this topic, but really it's because I saw the positive effects of others sharing their journey. It encouraged me. It comforted me to know that I wasn't alone and I reached out to them and we supported each other through this. And to know that I have the possibility of encouraging and uplifting somebody that might be struggling makes it worth it. I honestly didn't really feel like myself until about a year postpartum. The postpartum depression was the worst, I would say, between the four and six month period. And it was just a surreal, crazy feeling because one, I was completely overjoyed with Eva and being a parent and being a mom and, and just the beautiful, perfect, wonderful human that, that we had just created. Matt was and still continues to be the best, most supportive, caring husband I could ever dream of. And our family, our friends, everybody was there and helpful and loving and kind. And so I felt, one, I felt disconnected from all of it. But two, I felt ungrateful for the fact that I was struggling with this. And I was frustrated with myself because there were some days where I would just cry. And I feel like I was, I feel like I was missing out on time. On that precious time with Eva and my family because I couldn't shake that feeling. I didn't expect to cry. Um, and I know that it's not, there was nothing I could have done to prevent it. It's all hormonal. Some of us get it, some of us don't. And like I said, you don't understand until you feel it, until you go through this. I, I started to, to feel better after about seven or eight months. It feels like the clouds, like that, like the veil that was in front of me was starting to, was starting to lift. And so I realized that that was only temporary. And that's another thing is on, on your bad days, it feels like, on your bad days, it feels like it's not going to end. You feel like you're always going to feel this way. And I think that's whenever it becomes so dangerous because a lot of people get focused on that temporary feeling and they really, really don't see an end to it when there is an end. And by whatever means that you use to get out of that depression, whether it be therapy, counseling, medication, anything, everybody has their own way of working through this. But you just, in the, in the darkness and in the thick of it, you don't feel like there's gonna be an end. You feel like this is the new you. Like this is the way that you're going to feel forever. And it's not, and, and you don't. And luckily I, I was able to work through it without any form of, of medication. But like I said, some people that's, that's what you guys need and that's absolutely fine. There is a, a natural supplement that I take called Anxiety Free that helped. Um, it helped a lot with my anxiety and I think it helped with uh, the depression. But I was able to work through it and at about seven or eight months postpartum, I started to feel a bit more clear headed. So I started to realize that there was there was an end to it and I wasn't gonna feel this way forever. It's, this wasn't going to be how motherhood was for me. And that was my biggest fear, was that I would feel this cloud above me at all times as a mom when I wanted so badly to enjoy every single second. And so um, as I started to feel better, I started to focus more on my health. I started to make my workouts a priority, like no ifs and or buts about it. I was getting to the gym, I was doing home workouts, even though I didn't always wanna do them. I mean, most, most days during this period, I had more days of not wanting to do it than I did of wanting to, which is not, it's not me. I love working out. I love going to the gym. Y'all know that. And so most days I dreaded it and I would go into the gym and I felt 
embarrassed. I felt unsure of myself. I was not confident. I just, I kind of drug through the workouts. Dragged? Drug? <laughs> but I did it. And I told myself that this is temporary. This will get better. And as I continued to make my health a priority, it did get better. And of course, exercise has numerous mental health benefits along with physical health benefits and I kept reminding myself of that and I knew that if I just continued to push forward and focus on my health and take it one step at a time I knew it would get better and so I would say at about 10 or 11 months months postpartum um Matt and I started the 75 hard challenge program whatever you want to call it um which we have a video posted about our results with it and um, I can link it in the comments below. And that was a phenomenal way for me to focus on taking it one step, one task at a time, but make my health a priority. And so getting into a routine helped me to take it, like I said, one step at a time, really just focus on making these choices daily habits. And it was tough. I mean, it was definitely tough, but the further that we got into it and the further that I got, you know, postpartum, um, the more and more I started to feel like myself. And this isn't because of weight loss. I didn't, I mean, I, I haven't lost a ton of weight, you know, on the scale since having Eva, but it was 100% about daily choices and habits and making my mental and physical health a priority again. Because the more that I pushed it to the side, the worse the depression would get. And so by making these tasks a priority, I was able to show myself that I was worth the time, I was worth the effort, and that my mental health was going to improve the further that I got into this journey. So about a year postpartum, um, around Eva's birthday, I really, really started to feel like myself again. And I mean, I think it reflects in the videos that we upload. The, the further that I get along, the more you guys are seeing me again. And I mean, it's, there's, there's nothing wrong with struggling with this because it's, it's very common. It's a lot more common than I thought, but it's just, it's different. You know, I, I went from working out several times a week, almost every day, being confident in who I was, enjoying life, enjoying every second, embracing every moment to feeling like I could not shake that storm. My confidence, my joy, everything just was at about 50%. Confidence, I'd say, was even lower. But it's it's hard because I, I tried to, I tried to shake it every single day and it just took time. It re for me, it took time. And I think that as my hormones regulated, um, and as I started to focus on my mental and physical health again, I mean, the, there wasn't a whole lot else I could do. Um, like I said, it just happens. It just, some people get it. Some women get it. Thankfully, I got through the storm. Of course, I couldn't have done it without the love and the help of family and friends and my husband and Eva. Of course, Eva seeing her little happy smiling face every day just unlike anything else like she was <sighs> here I go again she was the little ray of sunshine in my day on my toughest days that little smile is all it took and I knew I would get through it it's been tough it's been very tough but I'm happy to say that the other side is so much brighter Life is, is a whole lot sweeter now. Um, I appreciate every single moment that much more. I appreciate the laughs and the hugs and Eva's little kisses that much more. I'm just thankful. I'm just so thankful for what I have and, and getting through it. And I just wanted to say thank you guys to everybody that reached out because there were quite a few of you guys that offered support and prayers and love. And I appreciate it. And I just hope to, as I said, use my journey and my experience to uplift other people, to help encourage other people. 
if you are somebody that has struggled with or is currently struggling with postpartum depression, please find help, whether that is through the support of your loved ones, if it's a therapist, a counselor, go to the doctor and, and you know, get medical advice, medical help. Um, there is joy and there is hope and this is only temporary, but we have to fight through it. We cannot give in to those feelings every single day. And I tell myself this with anxiety as well because I still struggle with it. And we cannot, we cannot focus on thinking that this is permanent because it's not. It passes. The tough times, the tough moments, those tough days pass. And we learn to appreciate the good days, the happy times, that much more. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, I just, I appreciate you guys. I really do. Um, those that have stuck around and know the channel's been through some changes, but that is life. We grow, we change, we adapt. And here we are. We come out stronger and more appreciative on the other side. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you'll have a wonderful weekend. Uh, lots more videos to come. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments. And hope you guys have fun out there. This is another episode of the Wonder Bill Show. The Wonder Bill Show.